Hello there, I'm Simeon Griggs, a solution engineer at Sanity.io. We are the platform for structured content powering digital experiences for global brands like AT&T, Burger King, and Unilever. Today, I'm joined by Bettina Donmez, Senior Manager of E-Commerce Platform Development at Puma, along with Matt Borgman, a software architect at Puma, and Luke Jackson from the global digital agency Formidable. Luke was a key part of setting up Puma's deployment with Sanity, Next.js, and a host of other infrastructure tech. Now, I know we're all interested in moving faster and removing bottlenecks from the things that we are working so hard on. And we're going to look today at how Puma, an enduring global brand, proves that you can make a highly complex, globally distributed architecture into a nimble release engine with the right setup. Uh, now we'll welcome to the stage Bettina and Matt from Puma. Hey, everybody. Uh, Bettina, can you tell us more about Puma's technology stack and the journey that you went on with Sanity, Next.js, and your agency, Formidable? Of course, Simeon. Two years ago, Puma wanted to do more with its content infrastructure than was possible with Salesforce, our commerce engine and repository for our product catalog and related content. Mm, but we wanted to be able to more quickly roll out global launches of limited edition products like the MB1 Galaxy basketball shoe or drops at Fashion Week. We also wanted to create a multi-platform ecosystem so that digital campaigns sync seamlessly across the web, mobile web, and our native iOS and Android apps for all global markets. We partnered with design agency uh, Formidable to help us build the right stack to achieve our business goals and create a composable e-commerce system based on modern headless principles. Thanks, Bettina. Matt, can you tell us more about how all this came together? Thanks, Simon. Using Sanity's powerful content platform as a connective tissue for all of our digital properties, Next.js for rapid deploys, GraphQL for queries, and a React Native application, we have transformed our agility and creativity for building e-commerce experiences. Instead of waiting hours or days to push campaigns live, now Puma can deploy in under five minutes. Our content teams can group, edit by campaign, and build digital assets that automatically shape themselves to the desired channel. And all digital platforms across web, mobile web, and native iOS and Android apps are now synced for all Puma's global markets. Now, I'm excited for Formidable to share more about our implementation and how we are able to achieve these goals. Excellent. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Bettina. And now I'll bring Luke onto the stage. Hey, Luke. So you headed up the development for the Puma project for Formidable. Now, how did you approach this mammoth task? <laughs> Yes, indeed we did. Uh, and awesome, yeah, it was quite the task. So um, this all started in late 2020, I believe, when Puma asked Formidable for a proof of concept. And I think they really wanted to see what the latest and greatest in content management and, and front end were. So I guess almost in instinctively we reached out for Sanity and Next.js as those two components to help get us started there. And that's the obvious choice. The obvious choice, indeed, yes. So um, uh, I guess we were especially excited to use Sanity because it boasts almost unlimited flexibility and has a lot of useful features out of the box still anyway. Uh, we knew Sanity encourages structured data, and I think structured data was aligned with where the business wanted to eventually be. So that all worked out. And so how do you take the, the structured uh, content as data approach to all of that existing data? So yeah, I guess we started breaking down the core taxonomies of Puma, what was important, things like typical e-commerce taxonomies, products, categories, et cetera. And we started like throwing some dummy data into a data set and created a bare bones studio that essentially um, made these entities um, editable for non-technical users just straight away. And once we had that set up, we pushed everything to GitHub and uh, Vassell kindly took care of deploying both applications, the studio and the web component uh, to pull request environments that we could then share with Puma. All right. And so you landed that POC. What was uh, Puma's take on that at first? I, th I'm, I think they liked it. Um, we're still here now. So um, <laughs> I, think the, I think the thing that stood out here was like the efficiency of this setup um, at this point. Previously, in the old Puma world, it was very laborious to get a preview or a sandbox environment in place for people to, to work on. 
Um, but using Sanity and Next to deploy almost any build to any environment now in around five minutes or less. So this made it pretty trivial to spin up like a new version of either or both um, for things like demo days and stuff like that. And generally brought a greater sense of collaboration between uh, developers and, and the business folks. Excellent. So you're making a lot of decisions early because there's a lot of connective pieces here. Is there any in particular that you're really glad you made in those early stages? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we've definitely learned a lot. Um, maybe if I had to pick one thing, it would probably be that we opted to use just a single data set and a single studio for the whole company, um, Puma at large. Uh, and I think it was you, Simeon, actually, that might have told me in the past, a, a data set is an archive of data that should outlive any of its consumer applications. And I think this rang true. Um, and in this, if you follow this logic, I guess, the less fragmented that data, the easier it is to look back on as a, as a whole. So even now with multiple regions on board at Puma, we only have three data sets and they're just development, staging and production. They're essentially just clones of each other at various stages. Um, and in a sense, they're also version controlled by nature because we and uh, Sanity keep track of all the changes that have happened within those data sets. Um, Furthermore, I guess we can also use these nice workspaces feature in the studio, which allows you to quickly swap the underlying data set um, behind that's driving the studio, let's say. I think this was maybe where the penny dropped as well for me, where a studio is really just a lens over a database or a data set, um, which is really very powerful. That's right. I like to say the studio is a, a versioned window into the content lake. Uh, so you've got this POC set up. Uh, so what's next? What, what else did you need to bring into the mix? Yeah, so I guess the next thing was to pull in some real data. So as you might imagine, Puma is a, a very large organization and has been around for a very long time. So they have a lot of stuff that exists. And uh, if we want to show that on the website, um, via Sanity, that stuff needs to exist inside Sanity. So again, things like categories and products, images as well, quite core pieces of content. And uh, the core pieces of taxonomy that we needed to ingest were categories and products. Um, there are about 6,000 categories across the regions we support at the moment, and these get ingested into the studio, uh, mostly as references every hour. So Every hour, a cron job works out and takes what it needs from Salesforce and puts it into Sanity. Uh, we also do this for products. As you can imagine, you might want to build a page around a certain product. And in order to do that, we need to know about the product and its attributes. So instead of ingesting the whole catalog at once, it's a very vast catalog. And I think this would take a long time. We opted to do this in an on-demand way. So um, as a content manager, if you want a product to exist in a carousel or something, you search for the product there. It searches the Salesforce catalog and then um, imports a reference of that result into Sanity for, for later use. This is great because I think it really tells a story of you don't need to import everything. So you can uh, import the categories that make sense. You can reach out and connect to other external sources as well. Uh, and if there's one very large uh, source of data, I'm guessing that's going to be assets. Puma must have just an enormous image library. Yeah, exactly. So I guess this is a little bit of a unique resource or, or document in the sanity world is images because they are data, but they are also their own thing. Um, we don't really create them, we just put them in. And I think Puma has a vast archive of um, marketing photography, product photography, and they're dispersed again around um, various CDNs and services internally and externally. And one thing that we really wanted to do is make sure that all the images for all the content that was made in Sanity resided in Sanity next to the data and next to the content. Um, and we did this quite simply. Every time you upload an image, it goes into this big 
a folder, if you like, with Insanity. And then we make that folder available to the company as a whole uh, as actually the first thing in the studio that you come to. And once you're inside that folder, you can start to search, filter, and um, choose the images that best suits your application or your content piece. And making these assets globally available must be part of this story where uh, we talked about before, administering every environment from the one studio, but we're also actually able to administer every market from the one studio as well, I believe, in the setup that you have. Yeah, so um, Puma is divided into regions. Um, some of them are country unique, some are groupings of countries. Uh, and it was a challenge. We initially started with North America, and then we split that up into USA and Canada. Uh, and then in the UK wanted to come in, India, Japan, and we quickly realized that we had to do something to make this scale. Um, one option was to maybe duplicate everything for the new market, but uh, although it might seem easy, it creates a very big maintenance burden. It's probably linear with the amount of... Um, regions you want to onboard, you now have to maintain more studios, maintain more data sets, new um, keys and things like that, which we ideally wanted to avoid. So we probably took what was a novel approach at the time. I don't know if it's more common now, but we decided to break this one data set up into regions and key our content by the region they were created in. So when you create a full bleed hero um, in the US, it gets tagged with an initial value of country US. And then if we want to create the same document in um, Canada, for example, we can just duplicate that document and change that field to be uh, CA instead of US, for example. Mm -hmm. So I guess this really highlighted how close everything is now. Like all regional content is not only in the same data set, but sharing that content becomes trivial. And what we're looking at here is uh, an administrator's view as well, isn't it? So you are able to split users into their own separate groups. And so a, a Canadian author, they might only ever see the Canadian content and they aren't confused by these uh, other markets of information in the same data set because they get their own versioned window uh, into this data. Yeah, we use the um, Sanity's roles and permissions as well. We take advantage of that now that we're multi-region. So you can assign somebody to be a US editor like you said, and they will only see content for the US within their studio and everything else gets filtered out, removes the noise. Excellent. So we've got uh, all the pieces together. We've got all these markets, all these environments. Tell me how uh, your content operators then curate this content, uh, either, either through explicit curation or personalization. Yeah. So I guess this happens in the studio for a start. So when content managers at Puma want to create content, it, it tends to mostly revolve around a campaign, a campaign or an initiative like Christmas 2022 or something like that. Um, so we built this in quite early on, um, which again was, was lucky in hindsight. Um, what a campaign does is allow you to group um, disparate pieces of content. So someone might go and create three hero banners over here and two carousels over there, and they're, they're dispersed on the site and placed on various pages, um, which can be a bit daunting, I think, for content managers. How do they keep track of everything? So campaigns in the studio allows people, uh, the content managers especially, to find everything around a certain initiative. So we use the references tab that goes and scours the database or data set for um, any piece of content that references this, this campaign. And that allows the content managers to see everything in one place and then manage everything in one place. So things like available to and from dates, for example, the, a core piece of uh, campaign data. Um, as well, like you said, customer groups. This became quickly a thing. So as a content manager, I, I want to be able to say, show this banner to only people in New York um, between November and January, for example. Uh, and that's what will happen. That's when it will be shown. So this kind and of that's authoring. 
sorry, that's cool. offering content in Sanity, but your personalization groups are coming from another provider, aren't they? So there's still this integration story uh, through the whole stack. Yeah, so we don't manage uh, users in, or customers, shall we say, in, in, the studio, in the studio or in Sanity at all. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one of those other things that we pull in from a from another system that's already set up and and working, and then we yeah, just but use you can, that. But you can target those users here, can't you? That's a, that nice yeah, integration we, story again. Yeah, again, yeah. We just pull in a reference. So all we need is the customer group identifier, and then we can mm -hmm. ship that with the component. And when it lands on the, in the person's browser, we check if it those things match up, and if they do, it'll render. And if if it doesn't, we don't. It doesn't. <laughs> Excellent. There's a story here we've missed as well about uh, preview builds. So this content that's being authored in the studio, uh, the, the Puma team are actually able to preview this, uh, collaborate on these um, before they go to production, aren't they? They can see it in situ. Yeah. So before we were messing around in the development data set, now we've made it to sort of the staging data set. And this is where most content gets created and staged. Um, um, we have a build there that points specifically at this data set. So a window into the data set as the customer will see it. Um, we have two options here. We had, um, you can just go to the website, the staging website and visit the page you want, or you can use the split panes feature and preview the homepage right there in, in the studio. Excellent. And I believe Puma also are, are collaborating on preview builds of the studio itself. So working on new schema models, work on new content models, they uh, have an internal review council uh, to be able to make decisions on not only how the front end looks, but how the content model that powers it uh, might be worked on as well. Yeah. Um, can you tell me about the scale, though, of all this? So you've got uh, a number of users now creating content across multiple markets, across multiple environments. So you've got some sort of rough numbers on just how much content's been created through this system since it launched. Yeah. Um, I haven't got exact numbers, but um, we probably should get those. Uh, the, number, <laughs> the number of documents created are going to be in the tens of thousands now, I imagine. Um, mm -hmm. The amount of campaigns, I think we we checked the other day, and the US team have run over 100 campaigns now through Sanity, um, created um, a, a thousand, let's say, at least um, hero banners. Mm -hmm. um, carousels are in 500s. Like, there's a lot of content being created, and as far as I can tell, Sanity's um, sucking it up pretty well. Excellent. And so now we're at the uh, most important part of the story is where we've got to deployment, isn't it? This is when we go live with, with all that content, we've got to get it into the production data set and, uh, and launched. Yeah. So I think this was one of the core challenges for um, Puma previously. They, I think to get to production might have taken to, to sort of get the staging data set in its for like final form into production might have taken up to 24 hours um, previously. And that would be migrated with the web application as well. So that probably contributed. But with Sanity and, and Next.js set up, we can not only deploy those independently, but we can do it in minutes, like we said before. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this was already a huge benefit. Um, we did start migra by migrating full data sets in the typical fashion. Um, but then we found a, what seemed to be a very useful plugin, which is uh, called the cross data set duplicator. Uh, I think this is a un slightly unorthodox approach, but it's proven itself to work uh, very well for us at the moment. And I think this is what's on screen at the moment. Um, it allows you to essentially take a single document. So let's say the home page as a document and migrate um, it plus all its dependent content um, to the next environment production uh, in, in isolation. So we don't have to take the whole data set and duplicate it and copy it over. We just take these little fragments of data and beam it to the other environment. Um, I guess the main advantage of this is because we're only shifting small fragments of data, 
the average migration probably takes under a minute now. So down from 24 hours. That's excellent. And yeah, I think what's really useful uh, about this plugin and what it shows is it really relies on Sanity's uh, strong referential integrity that uh, any, uh, and it relies on the studio conventions as well. So any content author from any single document uh, can take it and recursively find all of its references and, and still make that very fine deployment of just a few files, uh, just a few documents rather, and their connected assets to go live. So uh, that's really exciting to see that in, in production. Um, all right, so uh, it, that's it. I think we're live. Website's live, live. Uh, yeah, and going yeah. strong across multiple markets uh, into production. Perfect. I think what's really excellent about this build out is that uh, it sets you up for the future. Um, as was mentioned before, there, uh, your data set really should outlast um, any current front end. You should be able to rebuild a website without needing to rebuild your CMS. Um, so if you would like to know more, Head to this landing page, sanity.io slash nextjsconf. You can get started with a free boosted plan and there'll be more details about Puma's build out there as well. Uh, we can't wait to see what you'll build with Sanity and Next Shares.